Tokyo Cantonment evaluate to Apex Medical Center, and if I may approach, I have a letter here of the Apex Medical Center saying that he is suffering from mass depression due to the loss of his wife and kids. Your Honor, I don't blame him. You know, but I don't think that putting him back in prison or back in jail is going to help him. I suggest that we put him into a rehab home with shop. I have right here, Your Honor, a letter saying that they're more than happy to take him. And it's going to be a 12-month program, the first time I'm here, The first program is going to be six months of alcohol, they to break alcohol. And the second program is called Better Life Living to help him get over this depression with his wife and kids, to help him with his problem. Okay, Mr. District Attorney, do you have anything else? Uh, no, no, we agree to the terms. Okay, taking everything into consideration, Mr. Venturi, it's obvious that you have, a, that you have an alcohol problem. Uh, this is not the first time that you've been in this courtroom. And um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sentence you to the 16, 16 months in Clark County Detention Center, but we're going to suspend that sentence um, upon completion of a 12-month inpatient program, um, and hopefully you'll be able to get your life together, and hopefully we don't have to see you anymore. Like, you can see the bell on your way out. Thank you. Mika Reyes, case number 3346782. She is being charged with solicitation of prostitution. Mrs. Reyes, how do you plead? Guilty. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney. Good morning, Your Honor. We're here to speak about Mrs. Reyes' activities lately. As you can tell, this is not her third time, fourth time, nor fifth time in front of you. This is her tenth time in front of this court, in front of you, Your Honor. As a matter of fact, she has been up here so many times that she has now become a landmark figure on Boulder Highway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your Honor, you got your mind. That's fine. Let's stick to the charges. Okay, Your Honor, well, I do apologize for that, but uh, as you can tell, Your Honor, with her demeanor and action that she doesn't even care about what happens with her life, nor does she care about her children's lives. That's why during the time of incarceration, CPS was called and her children have been taken. So at this time, we honor, we ask and we demand that we show justice to the court and to the public, and we ask for a minimum of a five-year sentence. Mr. Defender. Yes, Your Honor. I got a report showing that her father was in prison for murder. Her mom's a drug addict. My client finally hard to find employment because of the record. You know, um, she came from a, bro a broken background, broken family. She was, you know, mentally, physically, and sexually abused as a child. You know, I also have paperwork for man. Thank you. Yeah, it was fine. That uh, she did file child support, but Mr. Reyes was nowhere to be filed. I, I don't blame her for her turning to the streets. But what I recommended her is supervise her. Supervised house arrest. House arrest! Would you rather go to jail? No, no, you want to stop Supervised house arrest with ankle, bracelet, and court order therapy. Is it true that uh, that her children were taken by Yes, Your Honor, as a stipulation to the house arrest and uh, court order therapy, we request the state request that uh, she also uh, take parenting classes. I believe that in order to get her children back, that. Parenting classes are going to be required anyway through CPS. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Reyes, yes. uh, as the district attorney stated, this is not, you've been here numerous times. Yes, sir. Um, and looking back on your files, everything has been a misdemeanor. So it seems that you're continuing to come in and going out and, and doing what you want to do, and there hasn't been any, any consequences. consequences of, of what you're doing. I don't believe that having a record forces you back into the streets. I believe that if you've set your mind to it that you could find some employment. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and um, sentence you to, to six months of house arrest with the monitoring bracelet. Um, you're going to be required to, to take the therapy. Hopefully that'll help you get over your past. Your Honor, I also motion for 
Does this test arise for our kids? Thank you. Well, that's going to be up to CPS, and I'm sure that uh, all depends on our parents and classes. Uh, they'll give us a report, and we'll go from there. So we're going with six months of house arrest with a monitoring bracelet, uh, court order therapy. Hopefully, you can get through your past and uh, whatever else CPS requires. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and set another court date for six months for a status check, and hopefully by then uh, we can make a decision on whether you're going to have your children back or not. Thank you, Your Honor. You can see the bailiff on your way out. I'll see you in six months, Your Honor. This court is in recess. Recess, recess. So it shows here there were assigned judges to be able to condole the conflict that is taking place throughout the whole world. Do you say that there were judge rights out of your own eyes? Prostitution, alcoholism, drugs, abuse. There's a righteous God that gave us the ability to live our lives. But God is about to bring judgment to the whole world, if I may say. It reminds me like the Bible says in Revelation chapter five, verse five, it talks about, about a book that has been sealed that no one can open because they weren't worthy. It talks about a man that saw this scene as he began to see that nobody was worthy to open up the sealed he began to cry. The Bible says, behold, the elders and everybody begin to recognize and they begin to see that this couldn't be open. The prophet John began to cry, but then he heard a voice that somebody by the Lamb of God, a blameless life, a life without sin, a life without a record was going to come and stand in the gap for all of us. Because in Judges 21, 25 says they did whatever was right in their own sight. But then God began to get upset because it was over and over again. They can come in with their cases, come in with their cases. And this is the story. It seems like the same cases continue to come in front of us over and over again. Mrs. Reyes, Mr. Ventura, you know, they come into the courtroom and it seems like they just don't care. They just do whatever they want to do. Maybe it's because they're not, maybe because there's no consequences given out. Or maybe they realize that that maybe, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just being too kind and you know, allowing them to a slap on the wrist or they know if they say the right thing or do the right thing that they're going to get leniency. But I think that from here on out, we're going to have to make a change uh, in order for people in the city of Clark County to realize that they cannot continue to do what they want to do. There's going to have to be some punishment. So I'm making a, making a statement from here on out that there's going to be no more leniency. If you do the crime, then the punishment that fits is what you're going to get. Court's back in session. Chase Clemens, case number 3538760. He is being charged with a DUI and involuntary vehicle manslaughter. Mr. Clemens, how do you plead to these charges? Guilty. Your Honor, we come here today to speak about Mr. Clemens' uh, inadequacy to follow the law. As you can see here, Prior to him being in a courtroom, he has been in trouble with the law a few times at the bench. Come on. He has had his license taken away for drunk driving numerous times. He's been incarcerated for a few months here and there. No damage was done, just uh, time in jail. But unfortunately, this time around, he was driving, intoxicated, and uh, a person was not only injured, Property damage was taken, but a life was as well. I, as a parent, find it appalling that a man his age can get away with this over and over again. We, as the state of Nevada, Clark County, are asking for a maximum sentence for a blood level of 0.3, higher than what most people should be having, which should be causing death. 
We ask for a life sentence of 25 to life with no chance of parole, Your Honor. Mr. Public Defender, these are some serious charges. Your Honor, I understand, Your Honor. Your Honor, I understand that, but you have to remember, for, I'm not trying to say that he was right, Your Honor, but let's look at the consequences. Your Honor, he comes from a broken home. He's been in 32 foster homes from the age of 9 to 16. He's been awarded the courts from the age of 16, and he's been in and out of prison. Your Honor, I recommend... Your Honor, Your Honor, I have also evidence here stating... Just hold on one second. Let me and finish. Your Honor, not only that, but Victor Rodriguez has also required that, in my very approach, they will take him back into the program. And not only that, we have a letter from the state of Nevada and Arizona from the governor saying he does support child support and he is working with us, Your Honor, and I don't believe even though I know it was a serious charge, you know, I recommend that we drop the case down from 25 to life and give him 2 to 20 and drop it down to a charge of DUI with dangerous circumstances. And maybe be supportive. Your Honor, I, just don't, I don't agree with those charges. I believe the crime should fit the punishment. A life was taken. There is a daughterless father out there daughter's mother, a sister is no longer after a sibling. This man stands in court with a smirk on his face as if he has no remorse whatsoever. Your Honor, we, we need to make an example of this man's life we are and give him 25 to life with no problem. We're going to pay off the restitution of the family, the property, the damage, Your Honor. I don't think you can pay for a life, Your Honor. I don't think there's something that you can pay for a life. Order, 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 in view of your past history of two other DUIs, the fact that you've tried different programs and obviously they didn't work for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm not a professional in that area, but I do know that there was consequences that, that there's a family that, that lost a loved one because of your negligence. And with the extreme circumstances that took place, the court has no other option. I mean, uh, it's in a sense our hands are tied. There is no other option. There is no other no other things that we can take into consideration. We are forced by the law to sentence you to 25 to life. Well, hold on, judge. Isn't there something you can do, like another class of how to take you to the Help you out. There is nothing we can do. I I can't offer you. They do have classes in prison. I hope you take advantage of them. Maybe just maybe one day you can get your life together. And but like I said before, the court has no other option but to sentence you to a life sentence. The only way out of this, Mr. Clemens, would be if someone was willing to come up here and take the sentence for you. Can you repeat that again, Judge? The only way that he can get out of this is if someone was willing to come and take the sentence for him. The sentence for this man, this murderer, this drunken man, this man that stands here with a smirk in his face, this man that totally disregarded, he's been through program after program, probation after therapy. He's been through the system. He's gone through foster cares. He's gone through this, that, and the other. He needs to go to prison for the rest of his life. A crime was committed. An individual's life is at stake. The public defender, 20 years, two to 20 years. I agree with the district attorney. I agree and I come with witness. Good job, Satan. <laughs> The Bible says that there's a great white throne. The Bible says that God is the judge. And that we're going to stand before him and we're going to give an account for every wrong thing that we ever did. The Bible says there's an advocate. Here is an illustration of the public defender trying to give the individual grace. But then we have the district attorney who is the devil. Oh, Lucifer. 
You have lied so many times. You accused us. You condemn us. You want us to have all the penalty of death. Yes. But the judge said, I will set this man free if somebody will stand in the gap. Who was that individual? When are we ever going to get it right? When are we ever going to begin to get it right? The answer is, unless somebody stands in the gap for us. Unless a righteous person stands in the gap for us. And who was that person? Forget about the video. Come to the altars. Who was that person? That person was Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that he lived a life that we can never live. You wonder why you always go back to the same thing? Do you wonder why you always struggle with the same struggle? Because you have a sinful nature that is constantly engaging in a war with your life. There is the good and there is the bad that is always trying to take the throne of your mind and heart. And we can try to do everything right in our own eyes as this judge did. We can try to build up a system of laws that we can walk. But eventually if we break one, we break them all. So when can we get it right? Should we do what the district attorney says and condemn them and sentence them for death? Or should we have grace and see the best in people? People are people. People are not perfect. But there was a perfect man that walked the Bible says at 6 p.m. in the evening, two hours ago, he stood there before the courts and he began to express himself what the accusers began to point. They began to say, this man, he heals. This man performs with the power of Satan. This man claims he is the son of Christ. He is the son of the living God. This man blasphemy. The Bible says that he kept silent. That his accusers begin to beat him. Begin to say prophesy. Who's beating you up? They begin to pull his hair. They begin to kick him. They begin to mock him. They begin to spit at him. They begin to say, this man claims he is a son of God. That he has come to take away the sins of the world. What is this crime? A crime of love. A crime that agony begin to cry out. That he responded to the cry of your inner hearts. Do you remember when you came in, how did you feel? Do you remember the Christless moments in your life? Do you remember the agony, the pain, the thoughts of suicide, the thoughts of giving up, the thoughts of giving up hope, giving up of life? You try to fill that void with drugs. You try to fill that void with sex. You try to fill that void with booze. You try to fill that void by isolating. Then what happened? 2,000 years ago on this night. What happened when he stood before the court and they accused him? The Bible says that he kept silent. He kept silent. And as they brought him before says that he was 
unrecognized on how bad he was beaten. The judge is God. But Jesus said, I'll stand in the gap for this young man. He deserves death. He deserves 25 life. But Jesus said, I will stand in the gap. I will take his sentence. What about you? As a worship team begins to make their way. What about you, Victor Outreach? Visitor.